This is a 25 marker question from edXL um, A-Level Economics Paper 1. I'm going to walk you through how to answer this question. We're going to talk about the concepts that are involved. My suggestion is answer the question first. So pause the video, think about what your answer would be, and then come back and watch and see how your answer matches up with what I come up with. Obviously, more than one way to answer these questions. Uh, but I think it's useful to have a think about what you would write first rather than just listening and watching to what I do. Uh, so the question reads, in July 2016, Apple's share of the UK market for smartphones was 38%. Evaluate whether such a high market share for one company is in the consumer interest. Use appropriate diagrammatic analysis in your answer. So I'm going to think about probably um, two, either two types of market structure. So I might be thinking about perhaps oligopoly and monopoly. Um, I might be thinking about, because it's possible that you can have this high level of concentration and be a monopoly, be the dominant player in the market, but there might also be other competitors. Um, we could also think in terms of different outcomes. So I might think about dividing by say allocative efficiency and productive efficiency or allocative efficiency and dynamic efficiency, which I think is probably the option that I'm going to go for. So let's go with allocative efficiency and dynamic efficiency is my top of B. Um, you could also divide this into pros and cons. So, which is kind of what I'm doing here because I'm gonna make the argument that possibly large market share is good for dynamic efficiency. So this ends up kind of being a pro and a con structure. My first KAA, I'm interested in uh, having a definitions, diagrams, and analysis. So I'm going to define allocative efficiency, right? Which is going to be, um, this is the efficient allocation of goods to consumers who value them most, which is characterized by the lowest possible price for consumers, as well as high output. Um, for the diagram, I am probably going to use a monopoly diagram, even though this might not strictly be a monopoly. Um, I can use a monopoly diagram to represent the sort of output restricting price setting ability that a dominant firm like this is likely to have. So in my analysis, I'm going to talk about um, as a firm with, and I'm not going to do the full thing here, but I'll, I'll say the structure of the analysis is probably like as a firm with a dominant position, monopoly, um, Apple is able to price, set, and will restrict production to MC equals MR, the point of profit maximization, in order to set higher prices and increase total profit. Um, this is allocatively inefficient compared to the perfectly competitive point, right, where average revenue equals marginal cost equals average, revenue, average cost, right, on the monopoly diagram. So it's going to be this point. I'm When I'm uh, doing the diagram, it's going to be this one. And I am going to talk in the analysis a bit more about like, welfare loss, those sorts of things. Um, I might do an application, which is to say, like, there are other firms, Samsung, um, Xiaomi, for example. Um, so this is likely oligopolistic. Um, however, Apple has a highly differentiated brand with a lot of customer loyalty. So effectively, they are in a monopoly position for, say, the iPhone, because consumers have such a strong preference 
for their product over the products of other phone companies. Um, in terms of evaluation here, I might say like, um, you know, this depends on levels of brand loyalty. There are challengers in the market. Um, challengers in the market. Um, and I'll talk also more abstractly beyond Apple because that's just one example. So in my evaluation, I think the key factor is um, markets with um, elastic demand um, will um, limit the ability of monopoly or oligopoly firms to set um, excessively high prices because ultimately like consumers can choose not to consume the product because they are price elastic right they have alternatives for dynamic efficiency again i will define dynamic efficiency um i i'm not sure what i'm going to do for for um i might do like a long run versus short run diagram So show so do something that would show like um, lower average cost in the long run as a result of innovation. Mm, right, so that would be one way. It's not sort of strictly one of the diagrams that you get, but I think that would be a good way of illustrating the potential upside for consumers of dynamic efficiency. So the analysis is uh, firms with super normal profits can reinvest that profit into research and development to create new products that would deliver additional value for consumers and would drive down costs over time increasing allocative efficiency and productive efficiency in the long run. Um, and then I would say my evaluation is like, this depends on the firm having incentives to reinvest profits, which requires feasible challengers to their dominant position or a strong incentive to reduce their costs. Firms may retain the benefits of innovation by keeping profits as opposed to lowering prices for consumers. This depends on price elasticity of demand. Right, so I would say this will make sense. There are other things and arguments we could provide. I would say in terms of judgment, um, the benefits or costs of a dominant position for a firm to the general welfare depends on A, the feasibility of rivals, in pressuring firms to continue innovation, and B, the price elasticity of demand, right? So these two factors end up determining in both cases, both for the allocative efficiency and for the dynamic efficiency, how much of the benefit consumers are seeing. Um, so that sort of nicely brings together both of these. Again, I would probably bulk this out a little bit more. But this is essentially what I would write in response to this. Um, I don't know if there's a, yeah, we could do the long run, short run for dynamic efficiency. I do like for 25 markers to see two diagrams, not strictly necessary, but I think very positive.